everyone in this chapter we will discuss post init processing now if you remember uh, data classes or class builders uh, for example here i have a simple data class which has attributes company price share and uh, low price low high and i am also mentioning the type hints of these attributes now since we are mentioning the data class decorator here the init constructor then uh, the repair method or the equality operator all of those are internally generated by the data class and the init method generated by data class takes all the arguments passed to the the, uh, the class or the default values for example if i say int equal to 100 it takes that default value but if you want to do something uh, and these are like i said these are passed to the init constructor so that means internally uh, the data class will automatically create an init constructor and then use these uh, variables or the attributes and takes them as input and does something now let's say we want to do something more than just uh, what init constructor does in data class so in that case we can use something called post init so which is basically in the from the name itself you can say uh, the post init is some kind of method or it's a method which is executed right after uh, the init so or you can say uh, data class uh, will add this post init um, to the last uh, uh, in the last section of the init uh, call or in constructor right so if so what are the use of uh, what are the uses of uh, this uh, post init processing first of all so let's say uh, you want to let's say do some validation of these uh, fields right so in that case uh, we can create a post init um, constructor or you can post init uh, dunder method and then add those validations in there and what happens is data class will execute uh, will take all these fields and do the construction um, of the class and right after that it will run this validation step or let's say you want to build a new uh, fields, uh, create a new fields uh, using these fields. Then also you can use um, a post init. So let's see some examples. So how do you initialize the post init? Is you just say post init, right? And then just send self itself as the as the first input. Now, um, now I'm going to show um, an example where um, you can um, uh, create a new field, right? So I'm going to say create a new field called uh, total uh, total price or something, uh, and I'm going to keep the total price as uh, number of shares times uh, number of uh, or number of sh uh, shares by number of uh, or uh, number of shares into or the multiplied by the price of each share, right? So this will create a new uh, attribute which is called total price, and that you can access um, uh, right after you create an instance. Let's say I create an instance H1. Let's say stock, and I say Apple, and say uh, for the price I pass. Let's say 180. 0.1 and number of shares I'll say 100 and um, uh, low high uh, is uh, low high is uh, let's say right now it's taking a default value so let's not worry about that now if I try to print um, total price uh, let's see what happens so as you can see if we got a new field a total price uh, by just multiplying uh, the share attribute and the price attribute right so this is this is uh, one example of how we can use uh, post init now the second example is uh, some kind of you can do some some sort of validation right so you can check if self dot uh, share is uh, of, or you can say uh, if self dot share is is instance of uh, let's say int uh, or you will check if it is not uh, of type int then you can raise some uh, raise some value or something. So uh, let's see this. Um, let's clear the screen, and then if I try this, it shows attribute uh, error. Uh, sorry. Uh, okay. This I should not say this. So now, uh, so since I'm passing share as the integer value, let's say if I pass in, let's say uh, some floating point, then um, it should throw an error, value error here. Right. So these are the things you can do with uh, posting.